Chief Justice Brian Sykes struck down an application for the court to throw out the fraud case against former Education Minister Will Reed and head of the Caribbean Maritime University, Professor Fritz Pinnock, on the grounds that the arrest of the men by FID officers was illegal. However, attorney at law Hugh Wildman is still asserting that they were arrested and charged by the FID. Here to help us have more clarity on this case is attorney at law Dion Jackson Miller. We're looking at it from all angles. Good morning, <laughs> Dion Jackson. <laughs> beyond the world, beyond you? this headline, how are you doing? Um, Dale, what are you just saying? Dale, what Dale are just saying? Frame it, frame it for us. You I'll, know I'll, I'll, I'll frame it. I'm not clue what is. That's <laughs> the first question. That's the question. I'm going to have to yes, frame yes, it. Yes, yes. I'll, I'll frame it. So yeah, yeah. first of all, um, I think viewers know, of course, that the president of the CMU, Fritz Pinnock, and Royal Reed, the former education minister, were arrested and charged on various fraud and corruption-related offenses. So, Delia, stop raising your eyebrow then. So, here, <laughs> so here is the thing now. Their lawyer went to court to ask the Supreme Court to make a number of declarations. They wanted the court to say that one, the arrests and the charges were null and void because they were not arrested by police as police, they were arrested by the Financial Investigation Division officers who they They believe has no authority to do so. Correct. Okay. So what the court did, um, Chief, Chief Justice Sykes heard the application, so he broke down the act. So number one, he actually agreed that the FID is an mm -hmm. organization that was set up to become Jamaica's premier authority when it comes to financial crime. They can investigate, they can collate information, they can analyze, they can advise the minister, but no, they it can't arrest arise. and charge. Mm -hmm. So the question then becomes, what was the status of the police who arrested and charged the men? Mm -hmm. And Justice Sykes looked at it, no, under the act, there are a number of powers that are pretty draconian. They can apply for money. Because if you think about financial crimes, it's a complex issue. So they need some various draconian powers to be able to investigate. But now any and anybody can investigate. So an ordinary, quote unquote, policeman or policewoman cannot exercise the powers under the act. You have to be what is called an authorized officer. There are only two ways you can be an authorized officer. You have to be designated by the head of the FID or by the Commissioner of Police. The court said it saw no evidence that these officers were right designated on. authorized officers. Mm -hmm. Now, what that means is that, okay, they were acting as police under the Constabulary Force Act. So the arrest and the charge seem to be valid. However, there are a number of issues that arise. One is that officers under the act are sworn to secrecy, right? The, um, the information they collect and so on has to be confidential based on what the act says. Mm, okay, the yeah. other question is that the judge said the act doesn't seem to make any provision for what is to be done with the results of these investigations. So what you have now is a situation as well where there was an MOU that was entered into between the FID and the police. This was supposed to be so that police could be placed at the FID which is what the FID says was done. Here's the problem. The court says the MOU was from 2013, mm -hmm. was for one year, and the court saw no evidence that it had been renewed or replaced. Okay. So one, the MOU not valid, and two, the MOU in any case couldn't make the police authorized officers. So the question we're left with is one, did the police exercise any of the powers under the act that they had no power to exercise, and two, did officers of the FID give the police information they had no right to give them? Oh in either case, the judge said questions are going to arise in terms of admissibility of evidence, but he said, this isn't a case for judicial review, go back to the parish court and argue that. But Mr. Wildman has said he's going back to judicial review court to have them um, to renew the application mm -hmm. there because he still says the matter needs to be struck out. Why, why, would, why would Chief Justice Sykes insist that the parish court should review it and not at the judicial level? He said that all those issues are issues of admissibility of evidence, mm -hmm. which he says is a matter for the criminal court where the, where the matter is now being heard. Okay. He basically said, look, 
deal with the matter, stop running, come to civil court every moment, because judicial review court is civil court, deal with the matter where it is. We should not be intervening unless it's a matter of, you know, really monumental importance. A lot of folks were surprised by this. It's who didn't do their whole, what, what happened? <laughs> what it sounds like to me, reading the, the ruling, is that there are a number of problems in terms of the drafting of the act. So the drafting of the act, and I think people are going, we're going to have to look at the act again to see some of those holes that Justice Sykes says exist. Do they actually need to be plugged? Are they actually problematic? And in the case of the MOU, for instance, if it is that the evidence is as that was presented before the court, mm -hmm. clearly there was some falling down there in terms of administrative issues. So are we starting all over again? We don't know because it's always going to be the matter that is before the court and the evidence that is being presented. So Justice Sykes raised the questions, you know, but he never answered them. Mm -hmm. So he raised the questions. So clearly Mr. Wildman is going to continue to pursue those questions as any defense lawyer would. And that it is going to depend on the evidence that the FID, the other side, is able to put before the court and the arguments they are going to have to make to counter those submissions. It's an interesting thing, Dion, because if the FID does all of that investigating and yeah. collating and, and then you say, boy, you know, there's, there's confidentiality and then, then, then you have that, you have yeah. some... Yeah, the agency that had no teeth. There's a big question there. Because one of the things the judge said in the ruling is that, okay, the FID can initiate investigations on the request of another government entity, like, I don't know, the DPP or some other entity. So you can presume that if you ask me to investigate, then when I investigate, I can hand it over to you. Right. But the act apparently never actually says so. And what if the investigation isn't done at the request of another agency? Mm. So again, what, they, what Justice Sykes ruling certainly did was raise a number of mm -hmm. very serious questions mm -hmm. about how the act can be actually used to, to deal with financial crime. Yeah. And going to plug holes in acts usually takes... It depends on, it all depends on how urgent the parliament thinks it is. <laughs> so, but the, what, what is going to happen, I think, in this case, is that you are going to have a situation where the, the criminal trial is going to be held up a little bit while you have these issues being dealt with. Because if Mr. Wildman says he's going back to judicial review court, that's going to have to be dealt with. I don't know if you all remember the current trial, mm -hmm. current Spencer trial, which took a number of years. And one of the issues was that a number of factors came up that had the lawyers going to civil court, asking them to make rulings before the trial could continue. And I think we're going to be seeing some more of that here. So a couple of years. Again, it always depends on the urgency of the matter of how urgent the courts, if you recall, Justice Sykes, for instance, has taken a position that matters are to be moving speedily through the courts. He's the one who, for instance, heard the initial application and delivered a, a written judgment and delivered it pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he has been setting that kind of tone First, yes. in the court and saying matters must be moving along speedily. So. I would think that the courts would be seeing this as an important issue that they're going to be giving some priority You're optimistic to. about that, Dan. <laughs> I actually am. Oh, I actually, I actually okay. am optimistic that they are going to be seeing it as something that, that, that is going to need some primacy and to be moved along. Mm -hmm. Trust mm -hmm. me. Just like All right, well, Fid is, keep, Fid is optimistic. They said um, the court's response was anticipated. They continue to maintain that they acted appropriately. And so we'll see where it goes from here. I mean, Mr. in the meantime, the people just want to know where is this going? What's going to come of it? Yeah. Can I just say quickly, because people tend to say people, um, oh, lawyers are taking technical points. As a defense lawyer, though, you're supposed to take any and every point that is in your client's interest. And procedures are there to protect everybody. Mm -hmm. So when a procedure is laid out in law, and it's not followed and a case is dismissed before because of that, what needs to happen the next time is that they need to follow the procedure, mm -hmm. right? The Correct. procedures are there to protect us. So yeah, I get the technical point thing, but all these issues are important and need to be handled properly. If it's thrown out, can they be recharged? No, not on the same matter. There, there's a saying that you can't have two bites at the same cherry. Mm -hmm. is that and that, also, is that not and also the issue of double jeopardy. Okay. This case have more twists and turns than Fern Gully, but we will keep to follow what is going on. Fern Gully? Yes, Fern yes. Gully. Yes. <laughs> and the road is smoother, so it may just move a little faster for truth. Thank you very much, madam. Nice to speak with you in this capacity. Attorney at Law, 
Dion Jackson Miller, and you can listen to me on the headlines because, trust me, she's following this very closely. When we return, and also all angles, sorry about that. When we return, we'll take a new read off the shelf. Soon come. Oh,